Hey everybody, this is Matt. Uh, before this video kicks off, before we get started, I want to apologize because I hate doing multi-part videos. And this video was never intended to be a multi-part video, but when we got started it was like, you know, we should really deep dive into how we make necks and why this is the best way to do it. Now, I agree that uh, there are lots of ways to make necks, but I've been doing this for a while now, as you guys know, just like you have, and I've come up with the best way, I believe, the best way to make necks. Now, the video title is probably going to have something like the absolute best way to make necks or something. I don't even know yet. But um, why would I give you guys uh, less information and why would I tell you a way that I don't think is the best? And further into that end, if I don't think it's the best, then why am I doing it? That kind of thing. So. Anyway, so uh, Brandon and I started making this video and it was kind of just supposed to be like a, kind of a, just kind of a regular old video. But then I thought, you know what, this is a great time to maybe deep dive into some stuff that we haven't had a chance to deep dive into and show you guys how we make necks for our set neck guitars. Uh, like the Challenger here or... Like if you wanted to do an Explorer, it's all the same kind of thing. And we thought, what a great time to deep dive in to show you guys everything from raw wood to actual, um, you know, ready to ready to glue up neck, just like we have uh, in our build a classic woodworking workshops here at Texas Toast. So uh, yeah, so you know, if, if you guys are kind of on the fence, you're like, eh, I don't know what if I want to go to this workshop or not. Here's some of the stuff that you're going to be doing. In fact, everything you're about to see in this video series is all stuff that you would do in the um, in our classic woodworking workshop. So I'm gonna show you how to go into something just like this, or if, um, I'm not gonna do this one, but if you wanted you know, to do inlay, I'm gonna show you how we do inlay here. Here's another one. This is a cool one. If you just wanna do, uh, you'll notice this one has uh, only 17 frets, but it's bound. We're gonna do binding, we're gonna do side dots, we're gonna do frets, stuff like that. Um, if you're doing a flying V, same thing. Uh, this is a particularly cool one. So yeah, just kind of, you know, we, we've, we've um, modified our process over the last several years and, and are, are to a point where like, you know, we're, we're trying to innovate all the time. Like for example, um, you can see these little pegs here. There was a time when we didn't do these little pegs on the back of the neck. You will also notice that this neck is not fretted yet. So I want to show you guys all of that stuff. I want to show you every cool thing that we do when we build necks. So uh, we're going to show you truss rod slot. Man, look at this. Woo! Look at this nice chunk of ebony. This is actually going on this guitar right here, which should be excellent. This is actually going on the guitar that 15-year-old uh, Matt really would have done just about anything to get. I'm going to be building a... Um, uh, I might keep this one. I might keep this guitar right here. This is going to be an um, uh, ivory SG shape with my headstock. Uh, of course, it'll be one of the prostitute models. Uh, three pickup, all gold hardware, ebony fretboard, custom uh, block inlay. Yeah, so I think I'm going to do it right. And I might keep this one. Maybe. Anyway. Um, so, yeah. So, again, I apologize in advance for having this be a multi-part video. And I know you guys don't always watch. You know, a lot of people watch the first one. Few people watch the second one. Fewer people watch the third one. We didn't know we were going to make this into a multi-part series. Um, so, yeah. I uh, hope you guys stick around for all of them. Um, yeah. And, uh, and we're going to make some super cool stuff. So, this is absolutely positively the best way to make guitar necks as far as I'm concerned and if you disagree with me you're wrong no you're not wrong you just have a different way of doing it be based on the tooling and stuff that you have um, but we're gonna let all those people who like to click the title and go I hate you Matt we're gonna give <laughs> give those guys something to bellyache about because I think it's funny so without further ado let's get the video started you guys and um, let's jump right in Today, me and Brandon are going to show you guys how to make necks. Hey 
Hey everybody, this is Matt, we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. Today, I am going to talk about making necks and Brandon is going to show you guys how we build necks. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with this uh, mahogany neck blank that we get from Dan and Calvin at Tonewood Experts and we're gonna turn it into something that looks like this, although we're probably not gonna do the uh, cross inlay on our necks. So anyway, let's jump right in and um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we're gonna do and then you guys are gonna to get to watch Brandon do it and um, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So uh, again, I apologize for the wood shop, but we are in a working guitar shop, not a working YouTube filming studio. So everything that we do is because we're guitar makers. Everything that those other guys do is because they're YouTube video content creators. Okay, anyway. Uh, so this is, the, uh, this is the blank that we get from Dan at, uh, at Tonewood Experts, as I have already mentioned. Now, the grain on this is vertically oriented this way, which means I want my fretboard to glue onto this surface of the, uh, of the neck. Now, you could put the fretboard on this surface, but then my grain would be going horizontally, which is fine, but I like to do it vertically. And since I'm gonna call this video, if you don't make next my way, you're stupid, or something like that, I might as well tell you guys how we really do it. So anyway, I want the grain oriented vertically in relation to which side the, the, um, of the neck blank the fretboard gets glued to. Now, as I have pointed out many, many times, just because the grain is running vertically does not mean that this is quarter sawn lumber. Quarter sawn lumber is a specific type of sawing where the tree gets cut into quarters, hence the name quarter sawing, and the yield is a bunch of vertically uh, oriented um, uh, lumber like this, more than you would if you, uh, if you got it another way. So this is not necessarily quarter sawn wood, just like if I orient it this way, it's not necessarily flat sawn wood. Okay, so guitar builders and guitar players generally get that wrong. Quarter sawing, if you see vertical grain, doesn't necessarily mean it's quarter sawn. And if you see quarter sawn, also doesn't necessarily mean it's vertically oriented. You don't have to take my word for it, look it up. Okay, anyway, the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to cut these in half and uh, get them ready for, um, we're gonna glue little wings on the, uh, the, the side here for our headstock to go because this is not quite wide enough for our neck template. Let me show you what I mean. So here's my neck template and it is on my neck blank. Now it's really, really close. There's just the little tiniest little bit of headstock ear here and here. So what I'm going to do is actually have to glue a chunk onto this neighborhood so that my headstock actually fits on the template. However, I want it to be a fairly big chunk, so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna trim this down to just over the widest part of the neck here, and then I'm gonna take a piece off the back and glue it down here um, to make way for my wings. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna true up one side on the jointer. We're gonna make three or four necks. We got two blanks, so we're gonna make four necks. We're going to true up one side on the jointer and then we're going to go over to the planer and make a matching side and um, that way we'll be able to glue on little wings and they'll be just ready to glue up. Uh, we'll also bisect this so we have two neck blanks and we'll get ready to go. Um, it'll all make sense as soon as you see Brandon doing it because he's really good. Okay, okay. All right, gang. Oh, one thing. Um, the reason that we're going to go to the joiner first and then the planer next is because you can't go from the joiner and then to the joiner because we want these to be parallel. These two lines to be parallel. So one true side and then we'll make the other side nice and flat and more importantly, parallel with the side that we just did on the joiner. Cool? All right. Um, let's go hang out with Brandon and he's going to show us how it's done. So we were just at the uh, joiner, 
and we made one side flat. You can tell this side is not flat, so I'm going to mark our flat side because we're going to use our flat side to take it through the planer, uh, which is going to make the flat side, or the not flat side, parallel and flat to the side we just made flat. So now we won't lose track of which side is completely flat first. Okay, so we are done with the planer, um, and now we're going to take our planks over to the sander because even though we have one completely flat side and we just ran it through the planer, it's not completely flat on both sides because the planer tends to create a little bit of snipe, some bumps. So we're going to take it to the sander, put it down on the flat side that we know is completely flat, and that'll take away some of the um, snipe and the bumps because we need it completely flat for our glue when we glue on the our little ears for our headstock. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get to that now. Now are you going? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, Brandon got all of our uh, neck meat, um, uh, got took it down to size. And what we need to do now is we need to glue on some wings, some little ears, right here and right here. And uh, to do that, we're going to use this material up here on the top that would normally just get cut away. So we're going to trim this off, split it in half, and take one side and put it here, and the other side and put it here, and uh, glue it up together. Then we will have our um, neck blanks ready to then cut this down the middle here, and we'll have two neck blanks. Cool, so uh, let's go over to the bandsaw. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I got my two pieces that were used to be down here, and now since I've, I had originally two sides that were nice and ready to be glued, I still do on these sides. I'm gonna turn them in like this, and we're gonna glue them down, and as you'll be able to see, we have just enough to do our neck, and that's gonna be like a hundred million dollars. It's gonna be super, super cool. So we're going to glue these little guys, these little wings on, and um, we'll let the glue set up, and we'll go from there. Probably could get a little more glue. You don't want a whole lot of glue on account of the more glue you got, the more it wants to slide around. And if all the glue is going to squeeze out anyway, well, what's the point of putting it all in? All right, that looks good. We'll let the glue set up and we'll come back here in uh, about an hour and we'll go to the next step. All right, so we have our neck um, blank here, and we let it sit overnight and dry overnight, so these wings are nice and tight and stuck on here. Um, now we are going to take this side through the planer, or through the joiner, and uh, then we'll take, we're gonna cut it in half, and then we'll take it over to the um, planer and sander, um, and we'll have two flat equal neck bolts. Alright, so we have our two neck planks here, and uh, they just went through the jointer, and now they both have two flat sides, and we marked them. Um, and they also have two sides that are not flat, so we're going to send it through the planer and uh, make both sides parallel, and then we'll finish it up on the sander to make sure that they are nice and smooth and even.
Okay, Brandon has got our neck blanks. Um, he's got the wings glued up. He's got them all surfaced and looking good. These are ready to go to round two, and that round is where we um, temporarily attach our template and drill some holes through these um, hardened steel uh, hole finders. And the, it's for an eighth inch dowel pin. We're actually going to mount this onto the back of the neck and we're going to drill the holes about three eighths of an inch deep. And we'll have pins then that, that we'll be using for both our truss rod slotting jig and our fret slotting jig. Um, those are going to work with everything from here on out. So we want to make sure we get those right. So Brandon's going to attach our template with some uh, two-sided tape, drill some holes, and uh, then we'll be able to move on to um, be able to cut the neck profile out and get everything nice and smooth. Then we'll move to truss rods, we'll glue some fretboards on, and we'll do some fret slots. I'm recording. All right, we're going to take our double-sided tape, uh, make sure the neck blank or the neck template is lined up real nice and straight on our neck blank. And then we are going to take it over to the drill press and put our uh, pinwheel holes in our Yeah, we should set the gap. You're a lot stronger than I am, Brandon. You should tighten it up. It's tight. So now what do you do? All right, next we're going to trace the outline, um, and then we're gonna do this to the other neck, same thing. Okay, gang, uh, so that's it. Uh, like I said, I wasn't planning on this being a multi-part video, um, and I hope that you guys stick around. If you appreciate content like this, please check me out on Patreon, or uh, you can join on YouTube, and you can see the exclusive content that we've got going on over there right now. It's uh, the same kind of video, only all about neck throughs. How cool is that? If you like the video, give me the thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please click the subscribe button, do the bell icon daily, and all that stuff. Uh, like I said, I'm going to try to keep this video series to a minimum, minimum number of videos because uh, what happens is people don't watch them if I don't do it all in one shot. So I get it. Please bear with me. Please stick around. And uh, until next time, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, start your own YouTube channel. That's what I did. We'll see you all next time. Oh,